Hey, good afternoon everyone. Jonathan Kilpatrick here with Kilpatrick Land and Livestock. And uh, today we're gonna talk about setting up an electric fence energizer correctly. So as you can see here, I have the Speedrite 18,000. Uh, it's an 18 joule energizer. And you can see on the little digital readout screen there that we're pushing about 6,400 volts out on the fence right now. So the reason I decided to go with a Speedrite 18,000, a couple of reasons. Um, one of the main reasons is they have a, they do have a reputation for quality. Um, they've been around for a long time. I've used Speedrite Stay Fix products in the past and had really good success with them. The other thing that really I liked about this model is that you can, you know, plug it into an AC outlet. Um, you know, it's a plug-in energizer into 110 or you can also convert it to a solar or a battery uh, d DC voltage setup. Um, so, you know, while I'm plugged in today to, you know, 110 in the future down the road, if I wanted to go somewhere else with it and I didn't have the ability to plug in, you know, I can set up batteries or even a solar panel and use the same energizer. So uh, most of Speedrite's energizers allow that capability. Um, some of the other ones in the market don't. So it gives me flexibility down the road. Um, one other important thing I want to note too is this is an 18 joule energizer. So um, a joule is a measure of the volume of electric electrical energy going through the, the wires so or the capability. So it's similar to like pints or quarts of, or gallons of water in a water system. The more joules, the more volume of electric energy. Uh, whereas volts is more like um, your PSI in a water system. It's how much uh, pressure of, volt, of electrical energy. So just a couple important distinctions. So um, make your energizer selection based on the joules um, of output. And here we're fencing about 40 plus acres with high tensile fence. Plus I'm running a lot of uh, electric nets. So this is probably more energizer than I need. Um, but because I'm running a lot of electric nets, um, electro nets for sheep and goats, um, I've been very happy with the amount of, of voltage I'm getting out there and in the animal containment that I'm getting. So, so uh, just a little brief overview here on the 18,000. It does have a nice selector switch here, so you can slide it to uh, different voltage settings. That setting, I think, is fast at night, slower during the day. It slows down the pulse speed. You can turn it all the way off. Um, let's see, this is like a, that's a much slower, it's a half speed pulse setting. I always just run it as fast and, you know, all the time. The other thing you'll notice is the red terminal here is our power going to the fence. So that's our hot terminal. And the yellow terminal is actually a half power terminal. So this is a big enough energizer that they do give you the option if you want to run this, like maybe close to the public or where a lot of people are or around some buildings or your house you can power it down just by switching this cable um, to your fence to the yellow terminal. The black terminal goes to an earth monitoring rod. So if you look up here on the LCD screen, there's a 0.0, .0 above that 6.4. So that, that, what that tells me is so it, that I don't need any more ground rods. My ground field is sufficient and it's doing its job. If there was, uh, I think it's above 0.3, I would want to add more ground rods. So there's a ground rod attached to the end of this cable here, and that is about 30 yards away from my main ground field, and it just detects any, um, it can just detect if there's more ground needed. And then obviously the green terminal, I'm just using high tensile wire, which is perfectly acceptable to go to my ground field, which I'll show you in a minute. But first, I want to show you, um, so inside here is where I've got it plugged in, and you can see I've got a surge protector, um, right there that is very important um, part of this so that you don't get um, uh, you know surges in energy from the electrical grid uh, it's only like an eight or ten dollars little surge protector but well worth the investment when you've got um, you know a pretty pricey energizer here um, sometimes the you're getting your energizer fried by lightning is not always the fault of an electric like lightning strike on your fence it can be power surges and stuff in the power grid so protect the power grid side of your electric supply as well as the fence and i'll show you the lightning protection i've got set up here in a minute but first onto the ground field um so as i'm going over here 
couple rules of grounding is that the minimum for any size fence energizer, it doesn't matter how many joules, if you're setting it up like this, you want a minimum of three ground rods per, um, uh, three, three, minimum of three ground rods. And then above that, if you have any more, um, any more joules, you're gonna want, um, for every joule, you want an extra three foot. So I have 18 joules on my energizer. And so that means I have 54 feet of ground rod in. So I'll just say that all again, any, any size energizer, the minimum is three ground rods. Now ground rods are typically six feet long. Um, so there'd be 18 feet, but um, if you have anything over uh, that, you know, for every joule, you want an extra um, three feet of ground rod. So this is how I have attached the wire, the high tensile wire. I just use a cable clamp or a hose clamp, I'm sorry, a hose clamp. And I don't, this is one continuous run of high tensile wire from the beginning um, at the fence energizer all the way to the last ground rod. And so um, there's no breaks, just easy. I just bend the wire, throw a hose clamp on there. Get out of the way so you can see that. Um, I found that hose clamps are cheaper. They work just as good. And I've had issues with the ground rod, this, the ground rod clamps breaking. And these are just stainless steel, so they'll last forever. Another point is always use galvanized ground rods. These are six foot rods. They do sell longer rods, um, but six footer in general, the, um, the standard and then you space your ground rods 10 feet apart in a, in a system and um, so yeah always use galvanized ground rods copper ground rods they can depending on your soil type they can develop um, like corrosion which will actually insulate the ground rod and uh, reduce the performance of the ground field um, so galvanized are pretty much the standard they are also much cheaper than the copper ground rod so another thing I want to point out is your selection your site selection for a ground field you notice here that I have it this is a, uh, a windbreak hedgerow and I have positioned my ground rods as best as I can um, so back over there at the well house that's where the energizer is I've positioned my ground rods under these trees as much as I can and that does two things it keeps them away from machinery and people tripping over them and it also keeps them shaded um, and helps retain moisture in the soil there because ground rods that are um, you know wet um, are going to perform better and conduct um, electricity it's a better ground field so um, yeah I've got nine of them spaced between right over there is the first one 10 feet apart all the way over here is where the last one is so this orange thing on this post, this is my lightning protection system. Um, so this is actually the Gallagher lightning protection. And um, so far I've been very happy with it. We've had a lot of thunderstorms so far this spring and have not had any issues. Um, so my uh, power supply coming from the Energizer hooks in here on this right, right side right there. And then I have a lead out going back to the fence and then this side hooks to the ground field so the idea is uh, lightning will always take the most direct route to the ground to get a ground so the idea is when you get lightning if it does strike your fence it'll come through here it'll jump this gap I don't know if you can see it but you can adjust this little screw in here and the idea is when it's just popping in there um, you turn it back a little bit so it's not popping or sparking on that plate and it's just perfect so the spark or the lightning will jump that it'll jump into this um, this uh, one right here and this is hooked directly to my last ground rod which is underneath this tree so the idea is there's nine ground rods between this last one and the energizer all the lightning the force of the lightning should um, theoretically um, you know, be grounded and make good contact with the ground before it hits my energizer and fries it. So, um, yeah. So then we're gonna move on to the actual fence here. So I've got um, insulated wire just running along this um, woven wire fence here. And then right here, I've got a gate. I actually have two gates here. So this is a higher, highly trafficked area. So I um, put it in half inch water line i just ran the insulated wire right through this half inch water line and i actually put caulk in the water line to keep water from getting in and then i wrapped it with electrical tape so reason you want to run it through 
um, water line is you know protected from heavy vehicles coming through you can pinch your line your insulated line i've actually heard had that happen you know a rock can you know pierce this outer protective coating and, and uh you have it shorting out in the ground i've actually had fences that'll you can hear them popping underground um, because it's leaking so take the time and do it and you'll be very happy um the other thing is the reason i did the cock or the silicone in, in the tape here is because if water gets in this pipe uh, here and especially in the winter time it'll expand and contract and when it does that you're going to also damage your water pipe and you can you know cause breaks in your insulated wire and then you'll also have shorts so keep the water out of that too so then we'll just run over here so it's going underground so the hot wire to the fence is going underground underground all the way over to here and then this is where the electric fence starts it's coming up um you'll see right there in the back side of the post and then i've just got it in a little uh shepherd's crook type uh, configuration here again there's cock right there but that way is a double protection against water getting in there and then it just goes to a cutout switch um so i can turn the fence off shut the power off right here on the fence so so there you have it pretty simple um, pretty standard um, energizer installation and as you can see um, as you look down this fence line here you can see the brown uh, I'll just walk down here um, you know you've got a good powered energizer when you're getting uh, a good brown line of the grass being burned off the line so um, this year with all the rain we've had so far it has has been having a um, tough time keeping up but in general that'll help keep your fence higher so any uh questions or comments feel free to leave them in the comments section below but i hope you enjoyed this and this was helpful and uh, until next time have a good one